All right. Now that I have my sketch kind of more secured, my base painting where I want it, and if I turn them off, I see that the base painting still has a lot of gaps in it. So all I need to add for that is some of the whites. So let me go ahead and do that. Little hits of brightness. Not painting with pure white, but with a stolen white from this collar. She's a little muted. I'm being fairly aggressive. There's a little tie pin that I might might use. And I wanted some of this fiery color. You see the greens complementing it. It's by Toulouse Lautrec, post impressionist French graphic artist and frequent visitor, colorful character to the Moulin Rouge where he did many of his portraits of the, the dancers and performers, the nightlife of Paris, the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, late 1800s. It's uh, Toulouse-Lautrec's portrait of Van Gogh is one I kind of started my inspiration of. You see the purples and the oranges and the yellows all contrasting nicely. It's something I hope to emulate with my refined painting here once I get there. So I'm still in my base painting layer. And I'm just trying to get more coverage. Steal this white, see what that's like. Very nice. Now what this big brush can't do for me is give me one, you know, clean, detailed line unless I shrink it quite a bit. So that's why it's still on the base painting. I'm trying not to require it, except for where I frame the eyes trying to allow it to be pretty bold, bold and big. But let those textures overlap a little bit. Small reflected light in the shadow under the nose that's helpful uh, a little bit under the lip as well frame it in corners of the mouth soften it up a little bit of darkness here And at this point, it's really easy to tighten up and get kind of fussy. And that's not what you want to do. You want to stay as loose as possible. Stay bold. And sometimes in order to give yourself that freedom, you need to move to a new layer. Just so you're not painting over what you've already done. It's just a matter of process. And I'm almost ready to do that. And I like some of this teal. More turquoise colors. 
We'll have to liven this up. Because I'm not painting his hand, I want to bring that to the outside of his coat a little bit too. So before I let myself move on from the base painting layer, I need to kind of rough in the whole composition. Now sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a new base painting layer that's called base white underneath what I have, where I just use kind of the light tones and fill in behind my paint strokes. Because often, especially when I have a sketch that's white underneath, you take it for granted what's already there. So this I can just kind of paint in. Because it's happening underneath my base painting layer. But it also shows me where I need to go a little bit darker. He's looking a little pasty still. A little safe everywhere, which looks nice and dark when there's white all around him. But when you go ahead and you fill that in with gray, he doesn't, his values look a little too weak. Give a little rosiness to his cheeks behind. And I'll move this layer up above my photo reference. Oh, pushed a little too far there. This gives me a little bit more to react to. be a chance to really kind of play with this brush too where it frames in the hair I'm going to get a little bigger Almost there, I'm just saving it so it doesn't lag on me anymore. painting underneath your strokes like I'm doing it kind of almost smears it like you're something I'll do with crayon and watercolor sometimes is use a heat gun and melt the crayon a little bit into the watercolor and then you can kind of smear it around but since water and uh, wax repel it doesn't always affect everything directly. It's like it's moving underneath. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty good for now.
let's um, same way kind of fill out that that's ah, that space on the jacket cut into it and on the tie which I've really been avoiding there's no reason to So in all these portrait demos, I'm trying to show different techniques. So this is painting underneath a base painting layer. <laughs> Something, again, you can't do um, with traditional media. Unless you're painting on glass or something, this is like painting on the reverse side of it to fill in gaps and to help flesh it out. It's a little like a cell painting for animation when they used to print the, the line work on cells and then it, they were painted from behind before digital coloring kind of took over for animation. Okay, so we've got a lot of that, that base painting work done now between the base white and the base painting layer. So that's my base white layer now. That's my base painting layer on top of it. I'm going to move it above my sketch. Right. Now another advantage of that is I can take my base white layer and I can play with its opacity. But I think ultimately I want to be pretty bold with it. And then I want to start moving past my reference photo, right? And maybe moving this gray up above. So I'm just looking at my marks. But if I'm a little unsure of that, I could take the gray down a little bit and let some of that photo come through. And then maybe take the opacity on my sketch down a little bit too. Now, what's nice about the sketch layer, I can make a duplicate of that, move it above everything, set it to multiply, and see how my line work is working. Because you see a lot of these, they have the line work on top of all the, the pastel and crayon. Kind of bled in, and I like that idea. And so I might use that in the future. Maybe at about, yeah, about 65%. And actually, that will keep me loose. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. I'm going to lock these layers. And now I'll be ready for refined painting on the top. So now everything's locked. So all I can do is work on top of my base painting layer with the refined painting layer. This is where I get to maybe zoom in a bit. I get to use a slightly smaller brush, about half the size, and just really attack it with lots of individual strokes. really playing with color and framing things in and trying to get to a resolution. Mostly stealing colors from myself, but every once in a while, especially when I want more saturation, going to these outside references. <clears throat> 